Hey, so I wanted to show you the working app here. Uh, so in the background we have the, um, the web app uh, going. Um, nothing for lab one and for exam one we have uh, Dr. Fisher getting a 98 here. Uh, on the Android client, uh, let's see, um, we see that I brought it up uh, so we have uh, Dr. Fisher getting the 98. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, add a great entry for myself. I'm um, getting a 92. Okay. I uh, can refresh this guy right here so you can see that popping up. Um, so you see that happening. Now I'll click OK. And it's going to add me, um, let's see, to the client. And then if I go back to the screen here, we can see that we get the, the update. Right? Uh, if I wanted to add something to, um, to lab one, so again, there's no grade there. So on this one, I'm going to hit the back button in my client. And then I'm going to drill down into, um, into lab one, right, which we can see right here. Uh, give that a second to, to load any students. And then go ahead, uh, let's see, give it a second here. So there is one known issue with the, with the app as we've given it to you that, that if you try to if you try to um, uh, if you try to try to add a great entry before the students are loaded, uh, it'll actually it actually give you a null pointer, right? Whoops. All right, so let's go ahead and add Dr. Marchler, um, getting a hundred uh, on this lab. And again, let's see, let's do a refresh of this. Um, so here's lab one, Dr. Marchler getting a hundred. I'll click OK here. We'll refresh. We'll see that he's here with 100, and I'll refresh the back end, and he shows up as lab one as 100%. Uh, so everything is is working. Um, as far as what we did, it turns out, you know, at some level, it's it's actually not that complicated, uh, but there there are kind of some gutches. So let's let's do a quick review here. All right, so uh, simple. Easy is kind of up to you. It's, it's kind of up to your experience doing it. Um, see whether you had any subtle bugs or not. But certainly simple. Um, really, what did we do here in, in, in this section? Um, TAD authentication. We um, added an Android client ID to the back end. Uh, and you need to redeploy the back end uh, for that to work. Uh, we imported the, the Google Play Services library. And that gave us an account picker. So we could, we could choose um, you know, one account versus another. Uh, and then the credential that we got from the back end uh, for the web client, right? we set that um, as the audience in our client, and then we passed it um, to, to the builder when we made the service. right? So really not that much, um, you know, not that many changes. Uh, the other things in the client that we started with you know, were things like the async tasks and, and actually um, you know, calling the generated code and everything to, to do queries and, and inserts and deletes. Uh, but that's all stuff that, that we had known from, from the past anyway. Uh, I will mention here, uh, and I'm, you may have experienced this uh, by the time you get here, debugging can be more difficult, right? And that's, that's honestly, it's because we're dealing with a whole system here, right? So we have a, a client uh, and we have a back end. Um, so a couple things that, that can give you some, some errors um, that I found in the past, right? So knowing about these things might, might help you here, right? So, uh, in fact, I, I'd like to, to jump right into the, uh, into the doc for a second. All right, so I put a section here at the, at the end on troubleshooting, right? Uh, so let, let's, let's, let's talk about some of these things. Uh, so number one, and th these are all things that have bitten me or my students in, in the past. Uh, so plain and simple, you need an internet connection, right? And and if you don't, uh, you know, it could just give you an, it, it just a, a flat out error, right? Um, and that could be on a on a device or a um, on a virtual device, right? Uh, so you need to have an audience uh, in the back end, right? So again, we needed to to set up that that audience field uh, for the Android client. Um, the back end code that's deployed must be the same uh, as what you use to generate the client code. So again, probably one of the, the last things that you're doing, uh, you know, when you're going to launch your Android app, uh, is that you're generating an, an Android client ID, right? And then you're going to deploy uh, that one again, and you're going to generate your client code, right? Sort of right at the end. Um, and actually, even if you had redeployed it uh, without the, the Android client ID, um, you need to redeploy it again, right? So, so even that subtle change uh, is something that you need to do. Um, so it, it took me, uh, 
oh, I don't want to say, but but it, it probably was a couple hours in total trying trying to debug, um, you know, what what was what was going on in mind when it, when I was getting authentication errors, right? Uh, host name needs to be identical to the URL of your deployed app, right? So again, you can just look in your um, in your generated code, um, and it and it certainly should be, uh, but you know, just just a good thing to check. Uh, in your deployed app.yaml, uh, you should have the PyCrypto library there, which is used for authentication. Uh, the sample code that we gave you the, um, starting was already there. Uh, just make sure. And then finally, uh, make sure when you're copy and pasting client IDs uh, that you do do it uh, correctly, right? So, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to not grab the whole ID to leave off a digit or something like that. And, and you just got to be really careful there, right? Uh, so anyway, that's that's all I want to say for now. Uh, hope you enjoyed this unit. Uh, if you're planning on using uh, authentication in your projects, right now you have a, a, an example to go off of. Uh, lots of starting code that, that you can use um, and a proof of concept certainly uh, that you can use in, in your own app. Right. All right. Uh, have a wonderful day. We'll see you later.